Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen. This is Hard Rock University back in the lab. He was sitting here monitoring some smelting stuff. And I'm going to be testing our spot test to see how well it works against real solutions. Now, these samples here were all sent to the lab for analysis. And I've got written on them the, uh, the actual concentration, but I haven't even looked at that today. I just put a number on top of each one. And then I need to put 10 mils in the tube because these are going in here. And you want each one to be the same size as the other so that it balances. The centrifuge spins at a high speed and it's in many ways a lot more efficient than filtration because you don't need filter papers or anything like that. You just take the container, stick it in there, spin it, and it turns clear. So let's put that in there. I'm just going to show you how it works. Okay. Coming up to speed. So, while that spins the sediment to the bottom of the tubes, I got more tubes over, oh, there they are. More tubes over here, I'll get those ready. And this is our indicator solution here. We put one drop of that and a half a milliliter of solution to be tested in each one of these wells, well, in this case, we're only going to be doing one. This is an actual test from today. And these are the ones that are here. And these, we started with a solution right here. Now this solution was assayed at 30.4 parts per million. And then by various dilutions, we got various concentrations of solution, did the test with them. Now the easiest way to do this is actually quite easy to get all this stuff. Since it's 30.4 part per million, just start with subsamples of 30 cc. So at 30 cc's at 30.4 is 30 parts per million basically. If you have 30 cc's of solution, which is 25 of 30 Point four and five of water, which makes up a total of 30, then you've got 25. If you want one part per million, it's 29 of water and one of solution. So basically, every drop, every portion of solution per 30 that you put in when you mix the various dilutions will give you one part per million. So that's how we basically did that and obviously we can't go any more concentrated than what we started with. But this is actually more than most of our leach solutions will be. We're generally running in the 12 to 15. So this should give us what we need and we will now see how it works in real life. So the procedure is pretty simple. And the reason I put numbers on tops of these so it was easier for me to figure out which one is which. The one that had the stuff on the little one was your sample. You just put of course, that's going to have a little problem. There's floating organics on it. And then you would just take one drop of this and let it evaporate. That's basically all you do. Now fill up the rest of the wells, and we'll see what this looks like when it's all dried out. If I might ask, what? I thought you were going to be filling that one since that's the one that's all numbered and this one is not. Yeah, that's for your laboratory. This is for just reference checking. Okay. In case you want to keep this, then that's on a separate one. Okay. 
The reason I only did 11 is because that's an even number, so I don't have to do a partially full bottle, you know, one, one just filled with water to balance the centrifuge. Okay. Okay, and then clean out the thing. Now, all of these samples are different concentrations running from about 0.2 to 17 parts per million. And as you can see, they have different amounts of sediment in them and stuff. So we're basically getting kind of a random sample of the kind of solutions we're going to get and see what kind of results we can get, see if it's reliable. Okay, so I've got my wells filled up. You can see even with the centrifuge, some of them are darker than others. So I put these little spots there to kind of indicate which is what. And then I gotta put a drop of KD. Now I already did one through five, so I need six, seven. Okay, so now I've got the indicator in. At this point, This other one. Now I'll just put them there and let them dry. And you have, there's our little thing there that you're trying to dry. A little cup. Right there. Let that be needed to dry too. So anyhow. Now it's just a matter of waiting. We'll be back when it's dry. Okay, well we've dried things up. And you can see there's definitely radical differences depending on something in the factors here. Now one thing we found is that the blow dryer seems to give a darker result. Now it's going to be warmer, it's going to occur faster kind of hard to tell why but when we come over here Eva estimated the concentration here I estimated it here and then here's the actual there and if you look at this in most cases it's two to three times but sometimes we're estimating it four times higher than the actual according to this demo thing. Now this was dried at air temperature. It just left out on the counter overnight and let it dry sort of thing. This was forced dry and we seem to have gotten a lot more intensity that way. For example, sample 4 here was only 24.9 parts per million. This one right there. And look at the 30 parts per million there. That's significantly darker. So this is a more sensitive test when you blow dry it. But for our purposes, we can see here, that's 0 .2, 0 0.2 parts per million. 6 is 3.14 parts per million. This one here, 3 is 3.8 parts per million. Once it gets down in those ranges there, that's, you know, it should be below that when it's coming out of our resin cartridges or else we need to change the resin cartridges. It should look something more like this. So it looks like our limit of sensitivity is where we need it. Although it looks like we may want to make a new standard sheet that we blow dry or we make sure we run our tests here just countertop dry them. And this sample here that we took today is kind of where we expect it to be. So that's good. Anyhow, that okay, so we've uh, taken the two sets. This was the blow dried one. This is the just countertop dried one. And you can see there's a, a big difference in exactly how it dries. But I don't really see a great deal of difference in the actual results here. They look, you know, some of these are somewhat different, but in general fairly comparable. 
anyhow, as I say, it's a useful test. You can clearly see the difference between high grade and almost nothing. And uh, we can use it, but it does not have the precision you would like. And, however, it is very cheap and reasonably quick. With the blow dryer, it's about an hour. Without the blow dryer, you just set it out overnight. Either way, not a big deal. So happy prospecting and keep it safe out there.